Greetings and welcome to ROI Clear. My name is Ray Hightower and today we are fortunate to have as our guest, Mr. Brandon Gates. Brandon is a commercial real estate investor and co-founder of Chai Gate Capital in Chicago, Illinois. ROI Clear listeners, please join me in welcoming Brandon Gates. Welcome, Brandon. Thanks so much for having me, Ray. I really appreciate it. Glad to have you here. Glad to have you with us. And uh, to kick things off, uh, we're going to ask you to give an elevator pitch. And for those who are new to ROI Clear, Brandon is on an elevator with someone he wants to influence. Brandon, what would you say to that person in the course of an elevator ride? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I started off my, uh, my real estate career as an industrial real estate broker. Um, I've done many different types of real estate. Uh, I've house hacked a property in Chicago. I had a couple of my closest friends live with me. I've, I've done some, I've done some wholesaling. Um, I recently acquired a property property with one of my partners in Indianapolis and a couple other, a couple other partners. Um, I, and I also do some, some land investing. So done the, the whole nine yards within real estate. Um, I think the only thing I haven't done is, is developed yet or, or flipped any houses. Excellent. So, yeah, you've run the gamut. You've done industrial, you've done some houses, uh, and you've done other asset classes of commercial real estate. So you've got some good experience there. And every, is everything that you're doing in Chicago, or do you invest in other parts of the U.S. as well? Uh, so I, I do. I just own a duplex in Chicago. Uh, my core my core market is, is Indianapolis. Um, Indianapolis, right now, the inventory in that market is, is, is pretty low. There hasn't been too many properties that have recently traded. Um, but most of the properties that I'm, uh, I, I we do own a property in Indianapolis. Most of the properties that I'm looking at underwriting are, are currently in Indianapolis right now. Okay, what is it that drew you to the Indianapolis market? You know, I think uh, I think a lot of people. You know, I'm a Chicago homer. I, I love Chicago, but you know, it's it's inevitable that Chicago has has some problems right now uh, mm -hmm. with, with, with 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 the crime and and some of the stuff with the taxes and in and, and the government and stuff like that. I think. People are looking to go to more business-friendly cities, more landlord-friendly friendly cities like Indiana. Uh, and, and you get a lot farther with your money in Indiana than you do with your money in Chicago. Yeah. And it's all about return on investment ultimately, isn't it? Absolutely. You and I have something in common. Uh, I'm, I'm from Chicago. I grew up in Chicago. And I did commercial real estate brokerage in Chicago some years ago. Oh, very so, cool. What uh, what sector was was brokerage? I did. Uh, I was with uh, uh, first. I was with a Century Twenty One office with their commercial investment division. Then a company called Matanki Realty Group. I think they're still active in Chicago. And then uh, Marcus and Miller Chap. So I ended, I was there in that business for five years, and I was with three different companies during that time. Very so, cool. Yeah, it's some definitely highly, some definitely highly, or some highly regarded companies for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was. Um, Man, that was something else. It was uh, a great opportunity. Like you said, you did some industrial, some retail, some uh, apartments, and one single family home. So all of that. Very so cool. I had to, got, a, got a taste of a little bit what's going on. And I hear you about uh, some of the challenges in Chicago. One of the things I like about Chicago is that it's got a wide variety of industries there. So you're not beholden to any one industry like um well, uh, you know, the way Houston used to be, the way they were dependent on the oil and gas industry, they've since uh, diversified somewhat. Uh, but yeah, there are some challenges there. I'm, I'm, um, of course, very, uh, very concerned for my hometown. I live in Arizona now, but I'm very concerned for my hometown. I want it to do well. I want Chicago to do well. And the lake will always be beautiful. You can't beat it. Summer days on the lake, you can't beat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True enough. Now tell us about the founding of Chai Gate Capital. What is it that went into your thought process when you were launching that company? What's your vision? Tell us a little bit about the company and what you, what you're thinking about there. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, so uh, the, the start was was looking into off market properties between the time ten to thirty space. Uh, I didn't want to go out and, and raise a bunch raise a bunch of money without having that experience, and I, I still I still feel I still feel that way. Mm -hmm. Um, as, as a younger, younger individual, I want to, I want to, I'm, I'm very confident in, in my, in my capabilities, but I, I definitely want to get that experience and learn from, learn from other operators. Uh, my first, my first deal, I brought in a partner who had a little bit more, a little bit more experience than me. Uh, but it's just been great, to, great to learn, learn from him, how he, how he's operating his systems. 
Um, and, and, and the long term, the long term goal is to is to acquire properties in uh, in growing markets, uh, Sun Sunbelt cities, and just continue to grow organically through through time. I've, I've always been a I've always been passionate about about real estate. Um, I I got a lot of great experiences from from brokering, but it was never really really my true my true passion. Um, I always kind of feels and, and even today, you're, you know, you're still within your in your in the in the client's demand, but I didn't like, you know, running around and, and showing people properties and, and stuff like that. I'd, I'd rather own the properties. And I, I feel like I have some good analytical skills too. And I, I kind of wanted to utilize, utilize those more. And I, I think it's, it's always better when you, you're the one that that's the owner too, you know? Yes. Yep. Yep. So you knew that you wanted to go into ownership. Did you know that you wanted to go into multifamily or did you consider an industrial or retail or office or some of the other asset classes or perhaps? Yeah, I mean, and, uh, I, I I always like properties that you can kind of throw your own your own spin on them and, and add value in, in different ways. Uh, I mean, industrial is it's obviously a great asset class. It's performing extremely well right now, but I was never infatuated when I walked into a, a box empty empty warehouse. It just kind of really didn't do it for me. Um, I, you know, when you go to the, when you go to an apartment building, there's so many different ways to add values, whether you're putting in granite countertops or quartz countertops or putting in new cabinets. I mean, shoot, even what paint, even what paint can do. I mean, paint can, paint can absolutely do wonders to a property. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I, I just like the way that there's more design to it. There's more architecture to it. Like it just, it excites me. It excites me more. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's important to go in an area where you have that passion. Absolutely. Okay. So what are some of the markets that you're considering? You mentioned Indianapolis. What are the markets are you considering for your portfolio? Yeah, I, I did. I did a lot of uh, off market outreach uh, in Florida for a while. Um, and I had a couple of properties that actually fell apart in, in Florida, kind of when the rates were hiking, hiking pretty dramatically. And we kind of we kind of felt that no deal was better than a better than a bad deal. Right. Right. Uh, so we, you know, we, we decided to try to walk, walk away from those properties. Um, Florida is a Florida is a great market, but it's, you know, with with insurance and, and and whatnot, right right now it's kind of making it a little bit more cha challenging, from my understanding. But uh, mm -hmm. I mean, being being in Arizona now, um, I think there'll be some some really good opportunities coming up coming up in Arizona in the next six six to twelve months. Um, yes, and then some of the other maybe southeast states, Tennessee, the Tennessees, the North Carolinas. Um, North, the Carolinas, not the North, not the North Carolinas, but yeah, yeah, yeah but um, the Carol yeah, yeah, we get it. Where people are moving, where people yeah, are yeah. moving. You want to be in the path of population growth, job growth, income growth. Absolutely. Wonderful. Now, of the three as uh, or the three pillars of commercial real estate or syndication, um, well, let me back up for a second. Do you syndicate or do you, or do, you do JVs or how do you structure your deals, maybe? Yeah. So at this point, um, the only uh, other than the, the duplex, the only the only property is a joint is a joint venture. Um, I, I really do like the joint venture structure, especially when you can find some sweet deals off market, direct, direct to seller. Um, I have a pretty good direct to seller system going. Um, so, I mean, syndicating is obviously obviously a great model, but right now I'm focused more so on the on the JVs. Uh, but definitely would love to syndicate in, in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, JVs now syndication in the future. Good. How do you find most of your partners? Um, through through mastermind through mastermind groups. Um, just kind of betting them and, and you know seeing if there's seeing if there's synergies synergies between us uh kind of balancing each other's skill sets as to what we're, what we're good at um you know, I, I haven't done any raising capital yet i, I feel better as a deal finder than, than, a, than a capital raiser so try to bring somebody else who can come into the deal and, uh, and raise some money okay got it got it so when we look at the three pillars of the deals that we're doing either as a jv or as a syndicator we, we're looking at Acquisitions, asset management, capital raising. You see yourself more on the acquisitions piece. The acquisitions and the asset management piece. Yes. Acquisitions and asset management. And you would partner with someone who does more of the capital raising, but of course they to get involved with other parts of the deal as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and not just that. And I, I would love to love the capital raise. I, I my 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 game plan was to kind of you know learn at learn asset management, feel good about about my systems, feel good about the team systems, um, and then be able to put my money where my mouth is and, and you know, start raising some cash. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's critical. Uh, there's, uh, because uh, the cash is like the fuel, like the fuel on the fire, pouring it on there. Absolutely. 
Okay. It, it, and partners are, partners are everything. It, it, you know, just being able to balance other other skill sets. And that's one of my favorite things about JVing syndication. Like it reminds me of of sports. Like everybody's role is everybody plays a critical role. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Now, do you have a sports background? I do. I uh, I played college football for for uh, a short a short stint in uh, in Iowa. Not not University of Iowa. Uh, a spot called Loris College. Got it. Got it. So what would you say that you learned in your college football career that applies to what you're doing now as a commercial real estate investor and company owner? Yeah, absolutely. I think getting discipline, you know, making, you know, as with sports, you, if the practice is at eight o'clock, you have to, you have to be there at eight o'clock. Actually you should be there 15 minutes early because otherwise, otherwise you're late. Uh-huh. Um, just got, the, the, the team effort, the, the collaboration aspect, kind of, Leaning on other other people's shoulders and not feeling as if you have to do everything yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. I think there's so many great lessons in front sports. All right. So discipline, making sure that you work with the team and that you can rely on other people and knowing that they can rely on you. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, uh, are there things that you learned as a broker that inform what you're doing as an investor now? Absolutely, I'm I'm extremely grateful for my experience as as a broker. I uh, had some had some really really good mentors that that, that, that trained me uh, how to how to utilize CoStar, how to how to pull lists, some even some some cold some cold calling tips. Uh, you know, coming coming fresh out of college, even how to send a, how to send a proper email. You mm-hmm. know, with, with greetings and signature lines and all that good stuff. So I'm I'm very grateful for for my experience there. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Now, of all of the deals that you did when you were in brokerage, what would you say that you were most proud of? Uh, most, most proud of. Um, that's, that's, that's a good. That's a good question. Um, I was, I was most proud of. I think the first deal that I did with with one of my mentors. Uh, it was a, it was a property in St. Charles, which is pretty close to close to my hometown. Mm-hmm. Um, and we closed on uh, I think it was like a fifteen thousand square foot industrial facility yes. uh, with a. The purchase price of, of over a million, and it was it was just cool. It was my, it was my first it was my first deal. Uh, I didn't I didn't do many. I, mean, I did I did a couple de- a couple deals as a broker. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a great that was a great opportunity right there at that one. Yeah. How about on the investment side? What would you say was your your um, your biggest triumph so far on the investment side? Something that you're especially proud of? Yeah, I think uh, so. I, my my two my two focuses right now are in the in the land investing business and then in uh, in acquiring acquiring JV properties. Uh, mm-hmm. re- recently, my my land business is is kind of a, kind of elevated and uh, had a couple really nice purchases or purchases and sales not not too long ago, which have been great. So, mm-hmm. all right. Is now for your land business? Is that something that you're developing? You're putting water and sewer and electrical on it and then uh doing the vertical are you just doing the horizontal or are you doing vertical as well or what what part do you get involved with with your land development yeah, so at this point uh we, ha- we haven't gone vertical on anything uh that's definitely something that i would like to do like to do in the future uh mm-hmm. you know coming up with architectural plans and, and renderings and put input utilities uh, on the properties uh and maybe even team you know almost teeing them up for another another developer um the long-term mm-hmm. goal is is definitely to develop but right now it's just doing some put doing some bush mowing you know just kind of cleaning the cleaning the lands up and, and turning it and turning and burning them okay all right and the market is such that uh like you mentioned in st charles illinois or st Char- is that in uh, dupage county it is in dupage county okay it's actually on the, it's on the verge of uh dupage and kane county okay got it all right. Yeah. So certainly DuPage has always been strong in terms of industrial real estate, commercial real estate there. There's always been a lot of opportunity out there. Uh, OK, so when when you can do that there, do you ever operate in I know there's a the six county area. Do you, uh, is DuPage a county where you focus? Do you ever ever operate in the other counties or is that where you spend most of your time? Yes, I don't I don't focus. That was more on the industrial side a, a while back. Uh, everything that I focus on. Now with, with the land space is also uh, in the southeast, like southeast regions, uh, the Carolinas and stuff like that. Got it. Got it. Okay. DuPage County and then southeast, the Carolinas. Yep. All right. And, and then you're looking at some things in Arizona. Maybe we'll do some things in everything that right now is in it. And, and we're close to some uh, deals in Tennessee. So there's a chance we might do some business together. We'd love that. Yeah. There it is. 
of everything you've done so far, let's talk about your investment career and what you've done in brokerage. What would you say you're most proud of? Most proud of? I, I was pretty, I, I felt great. Um, when we, uh, my partners and I closed on a unit, a unit property in Indianapolis, yes. uh, which, which was uh, sourced uh, direct to seller. Um, we actually, we actually found it from a, from a cold email, which was, which was pretty funny. And we kind of thought we kind of caught the, the seller at the, at the right time. Um, mm -hmm. He, the seller was, had, he had a closing and on the day of closing, the buyer didn't show up. The, the, everything was, was, and, and then we just kind of had a, had an opportunity fall into our lap. And uh, the property is very cool because we actually pay taxes on them as if they're, as if they're condos. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're all individually condoed out and there could be a, there could be a possibility at the end of even selling them all off if it is condos in the school. Brilliant excellent, uh, exit strategy because uh, the condos, the each individual condo multiplied by the number of units, that's going to be more than what you can get for the property as a whole, typically. Yeah, and that's something we'd have to talk to the talk to the partnership about. But um, it just it's always good when you have multiple have a multiple exit strategies. I think that's always a good thing. Yeah, that does it. That does it for you. So, Brandon, what's next for you? What's next for your career and your business? Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd like to do something in the, the 20 to 50 unit space uh, co coming up shortly. So just trying mm -hmm. to underwrite, uh, underwrite deals. Uh, we, we put in a couple, we put in some offers in recently, uh, some LOIs out on, on, on similar sized properties. Mm -hmm. uh, haven't had anything, you know, come to, come to fruition, but I, I know through time and, and keep, keep sending those letters in and it, it'll come. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, we're coming towards the end, and this goes really quick. I should ask you, what are some things that you're reading or listening to right now that you would like to share with our audience? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the books I recently read was Think Like a Monk uh, by Jay Shetty. Uh, it's, it's very outside of, of, of real estate base, but uh, I, I love this guy's mindset on, on, on the meditation and, and mindfulness and, and being in – quiet and in peace, peaceful environments and, and you know not always having the, the tv on and the music on and all that stuff and it's kind of kind of being to yourself it's been something that i'm uh trying to do more and mm -hmm. uh, i think it's i think it's all so all right well brandon gates you're thinking like a monk and it's great uh, glad to uh, glad to spend some time with you here today i i'm so grateful that we were able to get together talk about your career, talk about what you're doing and talk about what your vision is for your company and for your career. Uh, it has been a pleasure, Brandon, having you here on ROI Clear. Thanks so much, Ray. I really appreciate you having me.